Hello, I'm Wendy from 3D Worldwide. In this video, we will learn how to create a glow effect like the one in this image. To do this, we're going to use a glow shader and a mental ray renderer. Also, I use a path constraint and a snapshot tool to create copies of our objects and shapes. So let's get started. First of all, we'll go to the main toolbar and select Renderer, Rendering Setup. And we're going to scroll right down to the bottom to assign renderer. Now here in production, click on the small icon at the end and we're going to select Mental Ray Render from the dialog. Let's close the dialog now. Next we'll go to Customize or we'll scroll down to Unit Setup. We're going to choose US Standard Decimal Inches and then press OK. We'll go to the Create Panel, Geometry, Sphere and here in the top viewport we'll just drag out a sphere. Now let's go over to the Modify panel and in Parameters, go to Radius and type in 2. We're going to need a shape, a path constraint and the snapshot tool to create copies of the sphere. So let's go to the Create panel, Shapes, and we're going to drag out an ellipse in the top viewport. Let's go to the main toolbar, click on the Move tool, then we'll scroll down to the bottom of the screen and bring the X and Y axis back to zero. Now let's go over to the Modify panel and in the Parameters we'll type in 90 for a length and 150 for a width. We'll just select the sphere, press Alt-W to maximize the top viewport. Now we're going to go over to Animations, Constraints, Path Constraint. All we have to do now is click on the ellipse to constrain the sphere to the path. Actually we have just created an animation but I'm not interested in that at the moment. Let's go up to Tools or we'll scroll down to Snapshot. Now here in the Snapshot panel, select Range, and we're going to type in 55 copies and select Mesh as a clone method, then press OK. We're going to delete the sphere in the animation now, so just press the play button to find it, then you can delete it. Now we can select the ellipse. Make sure you have it selected, then go over to the Modify panel. We'll scroll down here in the parameters and we'll set the length to 130 and the width to 190. We're going to reuse this ellipse to add the next path constraint. First of all we'll go and create a star, we'll go to shapes, star, and we're going to drag out our star. There we are, don't worry about that, we'll go over now to the parameters and we're going to fix it. Let's type the radius 1, type in 3, and radius 2, 1.5. There we are, we'll just zoom in. I'm just going to change the colour so we can see it better. There we are, if I zoom in, there we are, we have a nice star. Okay, now we're going to go to Animations, Constraints, Path Constraint. You can see again, I have the rubber band. I'm going to click on to the Eclipse. There we are, it's been a constraint to the path. This time, let's go over to the panel and we're going to scroll down and click on Follow. This is so my star will point in that direction. Okay, I'm just going to zoom in a wee bit. I'm going to go to Tools, Snapshot, and now I'm going to keep the 55 copies and press OK. We can also delete the star with the path constraint on it and the ellipse. Press Alt W on the keyboard to go back to all four viewports. We're going to add a camera now to our top viewport, so we'll go over to the Create Panel Camera and select the Target Camera. We're just going to drag out a camera Place it at the bottom of the top viewport and drag it to the middle. Now we're going to go over to the perspective viewport, click on the word perspective and click uh, and select sorry, camera one view. And now from the top and the left viewport we can just move our camera around. We can drag it up and move it to the side. There we are, we're looking for a position like that, like our camera view. There we are. Let's go up to the main toolbar, we'll select Rendering, Rendering Setup. Now we're going to go here to Output Size, Custom, and we'll just scroll down to the bottom and select HDTV. In the width I'm going to type in 640 and 360. It's just for, to save on rendering time for this video. Right click on the word Camera and select Show Save Frame from the menu. There we are. Now we can create our text. We're going to do that in the top viewport. So I'm just going to zoom in here a little. Then I'll go over to the Create panel, Shapes, and select Text. Let's just scroll down a minute. Now here we're going to change our font. Let's select an Arial Black Normal font. 
We'll go up to Rendering. I'm going to Enable and Render and Enable in Viewport. In Thickness, I'll type in 0 0.8. And now I'm just going to scroll down the size. I think I'll type in 50. We'll try 50. Text, we're going to delete Max Text and type in Glow in capital letters. Just click in the center of the top viewport. I think we can bring that down a little. Let's bring our size down. Bring it down to 45. Oh, I think that's a lot better. Let's create a second text now. We're going to go and change our thickness. We'll change it to 0 0.3. And also we're going to change our font type. Let's scroll down and we'll uh, select a Times New Roman cursive. Change the size. We'll type in 20. And here in text, I'm going to type in light effect. Now I'm just going to go to the top viewport and click under the word glow. Here we are. I think we can go back over and change our size. Let's bring it down to something like 15. Now we can do a quick render to see how it's coming along. But first, click anywhere in the camera viewport to activate it. Then we'll go up to the main toolbar and we'll click on the rendering setup icon. Now we're going to scroll right down to the bottom where it says view. Make sure it's in camera view and we'll lock it. Then we'll press render. As you can see, we have no materials added yet. We just wanted to see how it looks. That's looking great. OK, we can close our dialog. Now we're going to create some background. We'll just use a plane. So we'll go to geometry and select a plane. And here in the top viewport, we can drag out our plane. Let's go over to the modified panel. And in the parameters, we're going to type in 700 for the length and 700 for the width. Let's bring our segments down to 1 for the length segments and the width segments also will bring them down to 1. Now let's go to the front viewport to zoom in and we're going to drag our plane down. Leave a distance between the sphere and the plane, something like that. Now we're going to add some materials. So we'll select the material editor from the main toolbar. Right click and view 1, go to materials, mental ray and we'll scroll down and select the mental ray material. Double click to open the material and type in star for a name. Then click on the small none button beside surface. And now from the material browser, scroll down and double click on glow. OK, let's double click up now on the glow shader. We'll go to the diffuse color slot. And here in the color selector, we're going to select the yellow, a nice bright yellow and say OK. That's going to be our glow. Our brightness, we can change to 35. Let's go to a surface material, we'll select the eyedropper and select the colour from our glow. And we'll do the same again for our diffuse colour. There we are, we'll say OK. Now we're just going to move this out the way a minute. And we're going to press select by name from the main toolbar. Now here in the dialog, we're going to select all the star shapes. Click on one of them. Then hold the shift key down and press the down arrow on the keyboard. Once we have all of them selected, click OK. Let's go back to the mental ray material. Now we're going to drag it over to the star. Now in the assign material dialog, select assign to selection and then OK. We can create another material now, but this time we're just going to make a copy. So we'll scroll down to scene materials and we're going to drag out the material we just created, star. Select copy from the dialog. Then press OK. OK, now we're going to double click to open the material and we're going to change the name to Sphere. All we have to do now is change the colour in the glow shader. So let's click on the map. And then from the colour selector, we'll select a nice bright red. We'll leave the brightness at 35. The surface material will also change to a bright red, the same red. And the diffuse, also the same red. We can use the Select by Name tool again to select the spheres. So we'll go into the dialog and we're going to select all the spheres. Press OK, then close the dialog. Then we're just going to drag our material over. 
and click on the sphere. And we'll also do the same again, assign material to selection. Let's create another copy. We'll drag this one out again, select copy from the dialog. We're going to change the map, change the name, sorry. We're going to write glow, which is going to be our text. And the color, we're going to give it a nice green. We'll leave the brightness also to 35. And we'll change the surface material and the diffuse color. All of them to green. Now we can just select the text and we'll drag the color over. There we are. Okay, we'll create one more copy. Just drag this out here. Double click to open it and we're going to change the color to a blue. And we'll change all three colors. Okay, now we can change the name. We'll just type in light effect. Then we'll select the text. And we'll drag the material over. That's all our glow materials now. Let's create a normal standard material for our, for our background. So we'll just right click in the view one. From materials we'll go to standard, standard. We'll double click to open it. We'll just zoom in a wee bit. And we're going to change the name to ground. Let's go over to the small map icon beside the word diffuse. Let's select the mental ray map and ambient occlusion. Double click to open it. And in bright, we'll click on the small color slot. And we're going to bring it up the dial up to a very dark grey, then press OK to close it. Now we can drag the material over to the plane. And we can close the material editor. We can grab the pen tool to move the scene in our camera viewport a minute. There we are, something like that. Let's add a light now. So we'll go up to the create panel, lights, behind photometric, we'll find the standard lights. Now we're going to select a mental ray area spot. Let's drag this out here in the top viewport. I'm going to position it something like a 35 or 45 degree angle from the camera. And we can drag up our light in the left viewport. Try to position it the same as you see in this video. Then we'll go over to the Modify panel and we're going to make sure we've got shadows turned on. We have ray traced shadows. In Intensity, the Multiply is set to 1. And then we're going to scroll down to Spotlight Parameters and we're going to check Overshoot. I want to scroll down now to Area Light Parameters. And here in Type, I want to change Rectangle to Disk. And in the Radius, Type in something like 100, and our samples will also boost them up. The U and the V will boost up to 15. This will give us a soft shadow effect. We might have to come back later on and boost this up a little bit more. Let's go to the main toolbar now and click on the render icon. I'm going to turn the video off while this is rendering. Wow, that is effective. Let's add one more final touch to the spheres. Let's close the renderer. And we'll come back over here to the area light parameters. And in the radius, I'm going to boost that up to 130. Then I'm going to open the material editor. I'm just going to scroll up here and I'm going to find the sphere material, which is the red one. I'm going to double click to open it. We're going to copy our glow map and attach it to the shadow. So we'll just drag it down here, release it, select copy. There we are. We can see now we have two maps attached. We have a surface glow map and a shadow glow map. You can add the, the glow map to all the shadows on the other materials if you like. But I'm just leaving it as it is now for this video. Let's re-render. I'm also going to turn the video off while we're rendering. Here we are. Can you see the effect? Very good. Well, I hope you've learned something from this video. Thank you very much for watching. Enjoy.